What's going on YouTube? So today I wanted to give you a little bit of a pre-competition diary. I haven't competed in over five years, but I guarantee so many of you have been in the position that a week out from competition or the week leading up, you've never really known what you should be doing to best prepare for a competition. So I competed for over 10 years, Olympic Games, Commonwealth Games, World Championships, every single competition under the sun that you can think of. And there's some, definitely some things that I learned over the years leading up to a competition that can help you be better on that competition day. And I kind of want to share that with you this week by doing just a little diary to camera to kind of give you an insight into things that I'm thinking about and the considerations that I'm sort of playing to in the lead up to competition. So I didn't know that I was going to be doing this competition. Well, I did know I was going to be doing this competition, I guess, a month or two ago as one of the seminars I did at Melbourne at Metal Therapy, they said, would you come down and do a competition because we let you do the seminar at the gym? So I was like, yeah, why not? Even though I haven't competed for five years. However, it's only really been something that I've started thinking about probably only two weeks ago, which first of all, isn't ideal. I would always say if you're prepping for a competition that you kind of need to give yourself at least six weeks out from the competition to start actually mentally preparing, but also preparing your training up to the competition day. So my competition is next uh, this weekend on Saturday. So I always work back from the competition day when I'm prepping what my training should be in the lead up. So normally the first two weeks back from that competition day is going to be your taper. So I'm essentially at this day right now, halfway through my taper. Prior to that, depending on the length of your training block, you'll do a, a technique phase and then a strength technique phase before that. And then a strength phase being the first element of your competition prep. However, fast forwarding to today, I'm one week out from competition. Now, from a training point of view, a week out from competition, there's very little that you can do in that final week that is gonna make you stronger or more technically efficient to perform on that day. But there is a shitload that you can do in the lead up to the last week of the competition that can hinder your performance. So I kinda of wanna cover that as kind of the first thing that we wanna think about. So normally your last heavy session before going into a competition is either the Friday or the Saturday before the competition, so a week out, and then five days out from the competition, which would be today. Normally in terms of what I aim to build up to on that given day is my starting weight. Now, normally for a starting weight for competition, depending on how your training has been going leading up to that, is normally around 90 to 95% of your 1RM or what you've achieved in training. Normally what I suggest as a good guide, if you haven't been near your PBs lately, is to see what you can hit for three consistent singles. This is the easiest way to work out roughly what your start weight should be for competition. That means that you're gonna get a nice safe lift in on that first day of the competition, but also you've got a place to build on. Common mistake that people will make in competition is try and lift too heavy on that competition day and miss their first lift, and then everything tends to go downhill from there. So that's kind of what I'll be trying to aim here to hit in today's session or last Friday session. Just to give you a bit of an insight though, in my last Friday session, which you would have seen in the previous YouTube video, I didn't have the best training day. I had my mum in training. I hit 130, I think, for one single and then missed it a couple of times. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment from a fitness point of view. Now, one of the things that I made a mistake on in the lead up to this competition is I've been using straps a lot when I'm snatching. Snatch feels very different when you're wearing straps to when you're not wearing straps. So that's something that I kind of had my first session on without straps on Friday. It didn't go that well. So I'm going to give myself the opportunity today, that week out, to snatch again without straps and see what I can hit for three consistent singles. I'll be aiming for roughly 130 to 140 kilos to be that weight that I can hit for three good singles. That will give me a good place to kind of work out what I'm gonna be hitting on my first lift at the competition. Now, just to give you an insight into my personal best, my best snatch with straps is 160 kilos. My best snatch in competition and ever without straps is 153. So I'll be sort of aiming to look look to start around that 140 kilo territory, which would be great. And then going 145, 150 would be kind of a dream competition in terms of snatch if I'd had a really solid build up. 
However, the heaviest I've snatched recently without straps is kind of, like I said, 140 and 150 with straps. So I'll kind of be looking potentially for this competition, maybe go either 135, 140, 145, so I can get the three plates on the bar, which would be brilliant. And that would be a cracking competition on the snatch. So that's what I'll be aiming to hit today. Now, when it comes to clean and jerk and warming up for the competition, for me, I always like to, the, comp, the day before the competition, to be able to do, what can I do for two cleans and one jerk, or for a clean front squat jerk? This is normally a good guide as to where you should be opening on the day, on the comp day. The reason why I like to do it with that front squat first is because it gets me used to jerking under fatigue, which will give me the kind of same feeling as what it's like to jerk potentially five to 10% heavier than what you're doing without the front squat. So that's why that's a good way to kind of work out where your guide should be in terms of your start weight for competition. It's slightly different for clean and jerk because we don't have the element of needing the um, straps or no straps of clean and jerk. Recently, I've been up to 180 kilos. So I know roughly that's where my fitness level is for my clean and jerk. So to give you an idea of what I personally are gonna be aiming to hit would be to open on 175, and then go 180, which is the most I've hit recently. And then that gives me the opportunity for my last lift all being well, if I hit those first two, to hit 185 kilos, which will be the heaviest I've done recently on my last lift. So that gives you a little bit of an insight in terms of what I'm thinking numbers wise on this given day today in the lead up. But say it doesn't go well, one of the common mistakes people make is to keep trying to hit those numbers before the competition. And then they ended up getting super fatigued in the lead up to the day and then they're tired and then they're not in the best shape possible. So that's what I mean when I say there's lots that you can do in this final week that can actually um, become a hindrance to your actual competition day. Now, the next consideration that we have to take into account as we're weightlifters and we're in a weight controlled sport is where your body weight at, is at. So I normally weigh myself every single day anyway to get a guide of what I'm weighing. In addition to that, what I also do is I weigh myself morning and night so I can see roughly how much I'm losing overnight. I'm massively against dehydrating or dieting too drastically in the lead up to competition because it will affect your performance. So I'd say if you have more than one to two kilos to lose to make your body weight category, I'd say start prepping to come down to within one or two kilos of that body weight category six weeks out. That way you're actually getting your final part of your training build up into your competition at close enough to the weight that you're gonna com be competing at. This means that the weights that you lift will be very similar to what they would be on the competition day in the lead up without having that extra four or five kilo body weight advantage two, three weeks out from the competition. And then you get the competition day and you wonder why your legs are feeling a little bit sluggish. You've just lost four or five kilos in a couple of weeks. It will affect you. So make sure your body weight's within one or two kilos that week before. I was 60, 68, I wish I was 68. I was 98 kilos this morning. So I'm within sort of two kilos of what is the new 96 kilo category now. Throughout the course of the week, the thing that I will do to reduce my body weight down is just reduce portion size. I don't like to change the types of things I'm eating in the lead up to the competition because my body isn't used to eating those types of foods. I know I'm used to feeling like eating the types of food that I'm consistently eating. So therefore I'll eat the exact same things, but I'll just reduce that portion size, which over the period of the week will help me just cut those last few kilos out. We'll talk a little bit more about how the nutrition will affect close to the day as we go through the course of the week. But that's something that's definitely a consideration on that first, on the first day of the week before the competition. Now, in terms of the mental approach, one thing that I love to do in that final heavy session before I get to my competition day is wear what I'm going to be wearing on the day of the competition. For a lot of people, may it be your first competition, the thought of getting dressed into a leotard can be extremely daunting. So I always suggest that actually practicing lifting in your leotard or whatever you're gonna lift on that competition day or week out is a great way to feel mentally prepared for the competition. In addition to this, another thing that I love to do in the lead up to my competition is actually practice lifting within a timed environment. So I'll use the clock on my phone and I'll give myself a maximum of two minutes rest in between my last few heavy lifts. That's roughly what you're normally gonna get in competition. So it's a great thing to get used to when you're actually in your training in the build up. In addition to this, 
Something that's also really nice if you've got the opportunity to do this in your gym is lift without music. In competition, the room will be silent when you lift. If you're always used to lifting to a hyped up banger right before you hit your lift, and then all of a sudden you get to competition and there's no music, that can be daunting. So again, adjust to the environment of the competition the week out, then everything on that day isn't gonna be so scary. Next thing that I'll also do if I've got the luxury is have someone in the gym tell me when to put the bar down. That's one of the elements that in a competition that you have to do, you have to stand still with the bar overhead and keep it static and wait for the down signal to put it down. These are all things that if you can practice in the week leading up to the competition, when it happens on the day on Saturday, it isn't going to be daunting for me. So that's just a few tips. Like I said, I've got so much more stuff that I kind of want to give you over the course of the week, but that's just some few sort of considerations that are running through my head this day, five days out from my competition in terms of what I'm thinking about. This session that I'm about to go and hit is really important today. So I'm going to make sure that I hit those numbers and then I'll check back in with you guys tomorrow, let you know how that session went and then give you kind of a, the next insight into the things that I'll be thinking about. Because obviously from a mental perspective, if that session goes badly, it's gonna really change sort of how I'm feeling in these last few days to the competition. Equally, if it goes really well, how's that gonna change my approach leading up to it? So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for the next few ones that are coming in the next few days in the lead up to the competition. I wanna kind of give you as much value as possible in terms of the types of things that I'm thinking about so that you can perform better in competition too. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Share this with your training partner that's looking to do their first competition or someone that you know that would love to, and I'd really appreciate it. Take care, guys.